Hi, and welcome to this short video about generating random data with controlled prior probability. My name is Alex Gaith, and I am a graduate student at Purdue University. This is a student lecture, or a lecture for ECE 662. To learn more about lectures, please visit Project TRIA at www.projecttria.org. In several application contexts, as in pattern recognition, for example, we are interested in generating a synthetic data set that contains two classes or more, with each of those classes having its own prior probability. Now, keep in mind that the concept of prior probability can only exist if we have two or more classes in the data set. So why do we need to worry about the way we control the priors? I mean, isn't the prior or the probability of a certain class just uh, the ratio of the class number of points in the, with respect to the whole data set? I mean, this is our first intuitive understanding of the, prob of the probability. But this is not actually the case when we're trying to deal with synthetic data. And for that, I'm going to go ahead and, and motivate the discussion by starting you, um, with a simple example from the old days of the probability. Uh, my example is going to be uh, mixing the exact number of green balls and red balls in an urn. And I'm going to go ahead and do random sampling with replacement. And let's see what we get. Now let us look at the code screen for a second here. And let's see what am I doing. I am taking the exact number of green balls and red balls and mixing them together. And I am randomly picking a ball with replacement. And I'm keeping track of whether it's green or red. And in the end, I'm just displaying an aggregate of what happened. So let's go ahead and do run this example and see what happens when I do that. OK, a couple more times. So what we are seeing is very interesting. In this setting, we are completely aware of the number of balls in the system. We have full characterization. We know that the probability of each color is going to be 50%. Yet, when we're doing a random sampling, we are not getting um, an equal number of samples for both the greens and the red. And for anyone who has studied probability, this should be very intuitive. You will never get the exact number, simply because this is a probabilistic system. And all it does, it tells us in the limit, if I keep doing this infinite number of times, the ratios of these two types will be equal. That said, when we're dealing with synthetic data, this is not the scenario that we have. We don't have a constraint over the number of points. All we have is random number generators that give us the number of points we ask for, whether it be it a Gaussian or uniform or whatever type of probability distribution. We can just ask for the certain number of points, and we get it. So with that in mind, we need to reintroduce randomness ourselves in those systems. I mean, of course, we can replicate what we did here by taking more points than what we need, discarding the rest, but this is, of course, not only it's inefficient, but it's it really indicates that we are not fully comprehending what we're doing. And I think there is a much better way of doing that by reintroducing probability into the system in one way or another. And let's go ahead and do that before we um, actually let's just um, show you an example of what would be a good random number generator in this environment using MATLAB, just by selecting the number of points for a Gaussian with a certain U and sigma, an immediate command can serve that purpose. Uh, let's go ahead and see that. So if I see what Y has, you can see that Y has all these values with respect to mu and sigma. Now, I'm using the statistics toolbox, which has this very neat function called random that can be helpful in generating multiple PDFs. 
uh, if you don't, if you happen not to have this specific toolbox in your MATLAB, the line that generates the Y, you can replace it by this function, which is available in the standard MATLAB, the rand n. And if you have a different mu and sigma from the standard 0 and 1, you can pretty much multiply it by sigma. And sigma here is the standard deviation. And you can shift it or translate it by mu. So how do we introduce randomness again in the system of synthetic data? There are multiple ways of doing it, but I think one of the easiest way of using that is to utilize a uniform, um, a uniform random variable or a uniform random number generator that can aid us in controlling the priors or the number of samples that we would like to get for a certain data set. Now, I'm not going to go ahead and explain the uniform. I'm assuming everybody is familiar with that. And in the example shown in the slide, you can see that I am trying to get two classes with equal probability. The premise behind this simply is, before I, put, I select a sample or I request a sample from a certain class, I generate a uniform, um, uh, a random value via a uniform PDF, and I query the system. If this value is below 0.5, I'm going to go ahead and request something for class 1. If it's above 0.5, I'm going to go ahead and request something for class 2. Now, the fact that we have chosen the threshold to be 0.5 is not is only for this example as a matter of fact this is precisely what you can do to control the probability by modifying the threshold to the one of your that that interests you i'm showing here two classes um for class one and class two and of course for whatever probability of class one probability of class two will be one minus that so you only need to, s to fix a single threshold for this matter so you can either say um class one can be 25%, can be 50%, or it can be 67%, or whatever choosing you would like. So how do we do this via code? Let's go ahead and concentrate on the code for some time. Let's say that I would like to generate a one-dimensional data of two Gaussian classes. So I'll go with 10,000 points. I'll choose my mu and sigma for these two classes, each are individual ones, initialization. Now, using the command rand, as opposed to rand n that I've shown before, rand generates samples with a uniform distribution between 0 and 1. I'm passing, of course, the number of samples I'm requesting. So this will generate for me 10,000 uniform samples. I fix my threshold. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to iterate over each uniform sample, and I query or I check the value of the uniform. If it's below my threshold, I'm going to go ahead and request a sample from the first class. As you can see here, it's mu1 and sigma1. I'm going to select one sample. This is a label that goes with it in a different array. If it's not below my threshold, I go ahead and repeat the process, but I request things for class 2. As you can see, this is very intuitive. And I repeat doing this for all the points that I would like, for the 10,000 points in the uniform. Now, as you can see, I am marking this by a comment that says conceptual. Because for any person who knows MATLAB, they're probably going to hunt me down for what I'm doing here. This is an absurd way of doing this kind of task. So I'm going to go ahead and comment that. And I'm going to scroll down to the way that it needs to be done properly in MATLAB, which is using logical indexing. Uh, I hope everybody who is watching this and knows MATLAB is familiar enough with logical indexing, because what it does, it uses the concept of, log of logical indexing as opposed to the uh, numerical indices. Um, so in this scenario, I am requesting a logical array that has the exact size of my uniform uh, control data points. For all of these, I'm checking whether it's below my threshold. So this will generate a mask for all the points that match that condition. And I'm here, I'm requesting the total number of those points. 
once I know the number of points that will be in class one, I go ahead and generate those points all together at once, not via a loop. And my assignment, because I'm using logical indexing here, let me go ahead and scoot that over a little bit so that it's a little bit more comfortable to see the whole thing. This assignment, what it's going to do is it kind of generate for me the number of points for class one and assign them to the equivalent positions in the array that matches that those positions in the uniform. If you're not so much familiar with that, you probably have to try it a couple of times. You have to um, actually see those variables and it will become so clear. Similar scenario happens here by assigning the equivalent labels. And I repeat the process for class two. Now, I'm going to run this and I'm going to look into the number of, of points that belong to those classes. The total number of points will, of course, be 10,000, but we'll, we're also going to look at um, what is the number that belongs to each class. So I am in case three of my code. Let's go ahead and say that. And I'll expand this to see how things look like. Okay. Let's go ahead and run. And by repeating this process several times, you notice that although I am controlling the probability, I generate it via a random number generator, but I'm not having an equivalent number or an equal number of points for both classes. In fact, I tried this for, oh, well, wait a minute, there you go. By coincidence, you can actually see that at one of our random samples, we are able to get a matching number. This, of course, is very hard to replicate, um, and I'm not going to spend much time here trying to do that. It's not fun. But uh, anyway, the concept is at least um, obvious to you. As you can see, the sum of all of these uh, sample points will add up to 10,000. So this explains what's going on, and that's the way you would do that. Uh, let me go ahead and run by another example that uses a different function in case you would like more than one-dimensional data. The concept is, is for controlling the priors is exactly the same. What happens beneath that is the type of data that goes into, the, uh, into your classes, be it uh, multivariate Gaussian, be it Poisson distribution, be it gamma distribution, any of those distributions that you would like to mix together within classes, you would generate them um, exactly the way I'm doing here. You would just replace the generating function. So let's run quickly over this example that generates two classes of five-dimensional Gaussian data. So I'm going to go ahead and fix like this is the number of dimensions. The number of points is whatever you want. I'm choosing it to be 10,000. Here's my mu1 and sigma. And as you are hopefully are familiar, the, uh, the mean for a multivariate Gaussian is going to be a column vector of the number of dimensions. The sigma is going to be a matrix of n by n, um, initializing things. And for my control variable, my uniform, I am going to generate also the same way that I've done before. Here, just for fun, I'm changing my threshold for class one. So it's 25% now as opposed to 50 before. The same process from here remains the same. I am selecting the mask for all the points that match my condition. I'm getting their count. And I am using this very specific command, the MVN random. So it's the multivariate normal random number generator. I am passing to it the parameters. OK. Repeating the process for class two. And I'm trying to capture here what's the total number of this. This is case four. So I'm going to go ahead and change my code to show that I would like to run that section. I'll go back. Okay, let me scoot this over so that we can see. And I'm going to go ahead and run a couple of samples for this. Okay, so as you can see, all of my class one are close to 25% of my total data set. My class two is close to 75%. I achieved what I want using randomness. And to recap, 
this is precisely what we're trying to do. We have, by looking at this slide, my whole system consists of the random number generators for the data that I would like. I pass them through a layer of randomness that helps me control the priors but also maintaining that it's going to be a random operation or a random system. And then by doing that, I will have, I will end up having with a single data set that contains two classes or more with my controlled probability. This is it for this lecture. Let me remind you again for more lectures that cover a variety of topics. I do encourage you to check Project RIA at www.projectria.org. Thank you.